Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Uh, if you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. If you tap on the little like button, we certainly appreciate that too. Okay. Uh, last time, in our last video, I was working on this Linkert M74B carburetor for my buddy Mike's panhead. And I've got it all cleaned up and I got to the point where I needed to put the float in the uh, float bowl. But I couldn't do it and I couldn't do it because I didn't have the float yet. And so I now have the float. I have a nice new float. And without advertising floats for anybody, I want to mention... There are all kinds of floats on the market. In fact, here's some destroyed ones. Here's a cork one, which is what the original was. Here's some kind of a, a foam one, which has swollen beyond getting it into the bowl. Um, and here is another kind of foam, or I don't know what it's made of. I guess what I'm saying is, Whichever one works for you is a great one. A good one that works is good. And I've tried all different kinds of them. I'm running a couple of them right now. I don't even remember what's in each one. But there are a bunch of these floats on the market now called Rubber Ducky. And they are made out of modern material. And I really have high hopes for it. It fits very well. Again, modern material that will supposedly withstand all the fuels and stuff that we're using now. Now, interestingly enough, when I got on the internet and tried to find one, one guy didn't have them, another guy didn't have them. I talked to one guy who had them, but he couldn't take my credit card over the phone. So, I, you know, I went kind of nutty doing that. Um, I'd like to thank that guy who sent me to another guy. That was a guy, Mike, in uh, Apple Valley. And he sent me to uh, 45 Restoration in New York. And I was able to get these floats. And I won't know how wonderful they are till I use them. I bought two of them. One for Mike's bike and uh, one for the bike I'm going to put on, uh, the uh, carburetor I'm going to be putting on the flathead. So here we have a float, and here is the little lever that holds the float. This is the little lever. Now let me go over the little lever here for a moment. The big deal with the lever is that the lever floats on the needle valve, that that needle valve does not get stuck, that it moves nice and smoothly in that lever. And if you have to get in there with sandpaper, Whatever it is you need to do to make that thing float really nice is what you do. So, that being said, here is the seat for said needle valve. This is the needle valve. Oh, how do I test a needle valve? Well, let's see. If I go like this, and I blow in it, I can hear the air escaping. If I hold the needle in, just the tiniest bit of pressure. and I can't get any air through it, it's seating. Now I know there's, there's improved needle valves and all that. This is just a plain old regular needle valve. Um, so I need to put a little bit of white lithium grease right here, which is where the uh, gasket is. So I'm going to put some in there white lithium grease with a q-tip. I know people laugh at me with my white lithium grease except the old timers who know how it works. The new guys just refer to it as grease. No, it's white lithium. Okay, so now we'll get that gasket down on there. Now, this is one of those things that's a bit of a pain. And the reason it's a pain 
is because you got to assemble it to get the float adjusted properly. And then when the float's not adjusted properly, which it normally is not, then you have to remove it to bend the little lever. So here is the float bowl. And here is the little lever. So what we're going to do is put the lever on the float. Screw in the lever onto the float, turn it over, put this deep nut on there or in there. We have a 5 16 wrench and a screwdriver. And we're going to tighten it up a little bit. We're not going to tighten it up too much. Just a little bit. Okay. That's a little tighter than I wanted it, but that's all right. Okay, it's on there. Now, this is the fun part. And I've seen it done about 14 different ways. And this is the way we're going to do it. I put the needle on the float level, level, lever. And then I put that seat right up there over the needle valve. And if it falls off, Nobody's going to be surprised, including me. Okay, now we've got that screwed up there. My finger's out of here. There we go. Now we'll drop the pin in there. Which is always fun. Nope, not happy with that pin. So we'll drop it out again. And we'll look in the hole. And Mike's starting to laugh and jiggle the camera. And now that pin dropped right into the hole. And we can very carefully start this nut. I don't know if I call that a nut or a screw. But there it is. Again, if I want to see if it's working, I can blow in it. Air is going through. Now, turn it upside down. I hear air. I know where the air is coming from. If I tighten this up, no air. So we have a needle valve that's working. The problem is we need to set the float level at a quarter of an inch. Okay. Now, with the float bowl came a really nice set of instructions, which shows here that quarter of an inch. So with the float bowl upside down, what you're going for is a quarter of an inch from the outside edge of the float bowl to the float. So we can see that that's not going to work. Now, according to the instructions by Harley Davidson, what you need to do is take it back out again and bend the lever. So that's what we're going to do. Picking up magnets off the bench. This is when you want to be careful not to drop this stuff on the floor. There's the pin.
and we'll take the the seat out of here. This is actually the needle seat. Okay, now the needle seat is out. The needle is out. And we'll take this float right back out of here. Take it off of the float. The problem is if you go bending that lever while it's attached to the float, chances are Excuse me, let me uh, use the vise here for just a second. Now, in my imagination, that was exactly the right amount. Chances are it's not, but that's all right. But, let's get this back onto the... Uh, onto the float if you bend it when it's on there chances are you're going to ruin the float because because the float will break it is not that strong it's just a float and the same thing happens in automotive i mean it's 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 the same deal. Okay, so I'm going to tighten that little screw a little bit again. Just a little bit. And I'm going to go through the same process. Notice I'll put the needle back on the lever. I'll put the float inside. Whoops, I dropped the needle right off of it. And everybody's going to comment that I didn't go crazy with it. Didn't get upset. And so far, I'm still not upset. Okay. Now we've dropped the needle down through the hole again. And we can put that seat right back up in there. Now if I have to bend that just a little bit with the float on it, I can be super careful, maybe. Okay, it now lines up in there, and I thought it did, there it is, I think, yep, it's in there, okay, put that screw back in there, we'll call it a screw. And it goes right onto that little float pin. And there we have it. Now we'll take the take the little ruler here. And we're still the float's still too low. And I'm gonna tighten this anyway. And see how much too low it is. And it seems to me, if I do this very carefully, I can bend that float lever. And there it is. And now I went too far. Just a little too far. And now, we'll check it again. It's pretty close. But I'm afraid we need to take it down just a little bit. Yeah, we're going to have to lower it just a little bit. And if you have to do it over and over again, that's just why they call it life, I think. 
The idea is don't get frustrated. It's not a big deal. Okay. Now we need to lower it just a little bit. Just a little bit. If I get real frustrated, I'll forget what direction I'm going in. So I want to lower that float just a little bit. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like... No. Like that. That should lower it just a little bit. Mike just nodded at me that it's right, but I don't know that he's right. But then, that's all right. The thing is, you just don't want to ruin that float. It's really nice that this float is the right size. Okay, so now we'll put the needle back in it again. I'm sorry if this is boring, but it is really reality. Drop it through the hole, put it in there. Put the seat back up in there. Now, I wasn't that good at this when I started. But if I do it enough times today, I'll get it right. Okay, that's in there. Float pin. Now the screw. And that float pin centers in it. And now we'll see if I got it. Nope. Way off. So I will finish this off camera. It's quite obvious to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it a quarter of an inch in there. I will take it on and off several more times till I get it right. And then if you look carefully at the directions here, you can see that the float also has to be off center according to the directions. Truth of the matter is it's not that critical because this float is smaller. The OD, the outer diameter is actually smaller, a little smaller than the original. The original reason they have this thing off-center is so that it doesn't get hung up in the bowl. When that float gets hung up in the bowl, or the needle doesn't seat, what happens is the carburetor overflows. And I get a comment that says, hey, my carburetor is leaking through the hole in the side. It's not leaking. What's happened is it's gone past the needle valve, and the, the float bowl has filled up and is overflowing, through the float vent. This is the vent in the side of the carburetor. Have to have air going in there so fuel can come out. But if that needle valve stays open for any reason or gets dirt, any kind of debris, anything in it, then just like any carburetor, the needle valve stays open, the float bowl fills up, gravity feed to that thing, and it flows right out through the vent in the carburetor. So that's it for now. We pretty much got it. The only thing we got left, of course, is I need to get this, this level exactly right. And then I will be able to put the bowl back on. When I put the bowl back on, gets this nice big packing on here and this big nut on here. And you know, on all the gaskets and seals in a carburetor, I like to use white lithium grease. And this carburetor will be ready to use. So I promise to get that float level set which I'll do, like I said, off camera when nobody's looking. I will get it right. 
and I will get this thing back together and it'll be ready to put back on the bike. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.